Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. A few weeks ago, I passed the one year anniversary of me starting to learn Unity and C Sharp in my spare time, and I'm still enjoying it immensely. While my day job and hobbies had made me a reasonably experienced programmer, I'd never worked with C Sharp or the related languages before, and also had no experience with game development engines. The last time I wrote a simple game, I used Delphi to build my own version of Minesweeper. And before that, I only played around in Turbo Pascal, using assembly-based graphics methods I understood all too little about. Yes, you heard correctly, Turbo Pascal. I'm probably technically a bit too old to be starting out in this kind of thing, but here I am. I still remember how utterly impressed I'd been after seeing a YouTube video about Unity, probably about a year earlier. A short time later, I purchased a 95% discount Udemy Unity course, which was just lying dormant. Then one day I saw another Unity video and I decided to install Unity and start working through the course. I completed about three of the small starter projects and felt I wanted to get going on something of my own. A few years ago, I'd built a little turn-based strategy board game idea in Excel with absolutely no graphics, although I had designed the board layout in SketchUp. The buttons worked and my VBA implementation kept track of all the game parameters, but it wasn't anywhere near something that anybody would ever be interested in. I started implementing the UI of the first part of that game into Unity and then added some very basic and very regretful 2D graphics. By this time, I was following various YouTube tutorials, with CodeMonkey and Brackies being especially helpful. While I eventually mastered the tutorials I spent enough time with, to some degree, I still remember how enormous the Unity environment seemed, and rightly so. There were so many different windows and panels, a myriad of components, subcomponents and sub-subcomponents to learn about, and they were so intertwined that trying to learn about the one invariably sent you down a different path trying to learn about another. It was during this phase that I gave animation a stab. I found a 2D image of a tree and set out trying to animate swaying branches. By carefully cutting the picture up into segments and adding animation bones, I could get an almost decent animation going. I also started playing around with particle systems to send leaves flying off from the branches. I think it was then that I knew that if I was going to put in the effort to learn these systems, I wanted to do it in 3D. It bothered me that the views I worked on would always be only the one side, and wanting to see the object from a different viewpoint would basically mean a totally new model and animation. And so I plunged into 3D. I set out to build a little woodcutter's cabin scene with some moving elements incorporated. I found a free model of a cart. Unfortunately, it was all modeled as one part or component, so I deconstructed and reconstructed it in Blender to make sure the parts of the cart were separated to allow proper animation, which in this case was basically allowing the wheels to turn on an axle. I then learned about hinges, which at some point almost left me unhinged. But eventually I was able to let the cart be pulled over slightly uneven terrain with all the movement, including the rotating wheels, being handled by physics. And I found an animated horse model to complete the picture. I had also written a little script that would make trees grow over time and then fall over, which led to a bit of an accident one time during testing. I started working on various weather and other effects, clouds, lightning, rain, stars and a fire and light combination. I learned a lot about particle systems and started identifying opportunities to improve on the implementations I found in YouTube tutorials. For example, the raindrops could be quite expensive on the system resources, especially since they had colliders to enable them to splatter when they hit something, and was also required to keep them from falling straight through the roof into the cabin. I was able to reduce resource cost by creating a smaller inner ring with colliders and splatter droplets and an outer ring without them to fill out the space. I also replaced the 360 degree disc into which the raindrops were spawned into a half circle which rotated as the camera rotates. 
so that you don't spawn wasted drops behind the camera. One of the first decent contributions I've made completely by myself was a Milky Way-like night sky of stars, where the stars twinkled, rotated around the terrain and faded out properly. Firstly, when it got cloudy, and secondly, as they neared the horizon. I also implemented a sound manager system that allowed me to organize and call sounds in a structured way. Another contribution was an automated flying script, which allowed animated birds to follow random paths through the sky while adhering to constraints. I had to get the rotation correct in order for all the turns to look natural, and it was quite satisfying to see my birds and bats flying around properly eventually. I put all of this together in a cabin scene with the elements reacting to one another, and then had the urge to share it. As Sir Terry Pratchett said, getting an education is a bit like an STD. It made you unsuitable for a lot of jobs, and then you had the urge to pass it on. So I made my camera fly through my creation and recorded one long scene for my very first YouTube video. Now I also had to learn video and sound editing, get some decent channel art and do everything a YouTube channel required from you. By the time my channel went live, I'd also been working on a solar system, well the sun, earth and moon only, and again I felt the need to share that, especially as educational content in my mother tongue Afrikaans. So I made three English and Afrikaans videos on that. Then I started visualizing mathematical concepts as a way to further learn Unity and kept making these videos. I added some Unity tutorials of my own and covered a few random topics as well. My command of Unity kept improving. While graphics was always going to be my weak point, I started feeling that I could decrease the cringe factor more and more especially if I could seek out the correct visual assets for the situation to help me out. And then one day in November 2019, I came across Jasper Flick or Catlike Coding's hex map tutorials, and I was hooked. I now knew that with the correct visual asset assistance, I could one day make a decent game. While working through the tutorial series, I reached out to Jasper and asked if I could summarize his tutorials into a series of videos. He said, no problem, and I got going. One objective with the videos was to make sure I understood the series well enough to present it to others, since I needed to understand it if I was ever going to really use it. It took five videos to summarize his series, and then I started adding onto the system and adjusting it as required for my purposes. I bought a big low poly asset pack to give me something to work with visually, and scrounged around for individual suitable models as I needed them. The free models by Quaternius have also been very helpful, and I've been a patron of his for a while. Since then, I've been expanding the hex map system, adding on or adjusting UI and technical functionality, slowly working my way towards something playable. It's still a long way off, but I'm still enjoying it and hope I can one day publish a decent completed game. Until then, I'll keep adding on functionality with the end goal in mind and making video content of the process, which I hope you'll enjoy and follow along with. And maybe I'll even build and texturize my own rudimentary models eventually. My thanks go out to everyone watching and interacting on the videos. And if you can think of someone who may enjoy the channel, please spread the word. Let's see what the next year brings.